we are actually going to see a scenario where we are going to virtually have obesity go up three times we will have the percentage of people who are overweight double about 10% of kids between the age of 5 and 9 are going to be overweight and about 7% between the age of 10 to 15 are going to be overweight and we all know that once you put on weight at a young age it's very hard to lose it the, the surprising fact is women their their percentage of being overweight and being obese is way higher than that of men it's almost double that's attributable in the world to obesity in 1990 it was 4% as of now it's 8% so we have a global problem and the same also applies to to india is actually mind blowing on one hand india is dealing with the problem of malnourishment while on the other hand it has broken into the top 5 countries globally when it comes to obesity india's weight problem is real and what was one known as a bastion of developed countries has now filtered down to developing countries that is our focus on monday's agenda this week indian men are 3.4% of the global obese population but that number is almost in fact it's more than double for women in the country where 20 million women are now obese in india with a percentage of 5.3% years later in 2016 a study put 135 million indians as overweight or obese and that graph continues to be on the rise according to the latest national family health survey a government survey that was taken in 2019 to 2021 nearly 23% of men and 24% of women were found to have a body mass index or bmi of 25 or more 25% 25 being the cutoff and it's seen a 4% increase for both genders over 2015 to 2016 in other words 1 to 16 women and 1 in 25 men are now obese there is more worrying news and it filters down to our children the data also shows that 3.4% of children under the age of 5 are now overweight compared with 2.1% in 2015 to 2016 that is barely 7 years ago in india the rate of annual increase of adult obesity is very high this is at 5.2% but it's the rate of annual increase of child obesity at 9.1% that's a whopping 9.1% that is a red flag this is according to the world obesity report as it stands or is reported 14.4 million children are obese in india second globally only to the children from china according to who too much body fat increases the risk of non communicable diseases cancers type 2 diabetes heart problems and lung conditions and last year Obesity accounted for 2.8 million deaths globally this in just a single year. In India is it social and a lifestyle issue? Do genes play a role and are Indian children then leading a sedentary life? Why are women prone to obesity? What are they doing wrong? To answer all these questions joining me today is Dr. Anupam Sibal. He is the group medical director of Apollo Hospitals. He is also a renowned pediatrician and thank you for taking the time out it's a busy time and you know i know this is, you've just finished and so just going to kick start it get into it and not waste any more of your time the amount of rising obesity in the country the amount of you know the the, the statistics that come out what 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 is the most bewildering part for you then you so right when you say that in india we always worried about malnutrition under nutrition but now we have this double whammy so we have and nutrition and nutrition but we also have a significant problem with over nutrition and i think it's in keeping with what's happening in the world so you know look back at 1975 and compare that to data now obesity has tripled uh, if you look at uh, the percentage of deaths attributable in the world to obesity in 1990 it was 4% as of now it's 8% So we have a global problem, and the same also applies to to India as well. While we we have made progress with uh, managing undernutrition, but undernutrition still remains a, a problem, as as we all are aware of. But we now have this huge problem with overnutrition, obesity. Call you what, whatever you feel like. 
and if we look at what the, the trends going to be let's let's look at from 2010 to 2040 so 30 year horizon we are actually going to see a scenario where we are going to virtually have obesity go up three times we will have the percentage of people who are overweight double by 2030 about 27 percent of the obese people in the world will be in india i mean because the population we are we're going to be the largest country so nearly 27 percent and even today if you look at 2023 uh, about one in five indians are overweight and, and and this is across the the gender so we have a significant problem and if we look at what what we are seeing with uh, with young children and we are seeing with adolescents the incidence is really increasing and we're going to have in the next few years about 10 percent of kids between the age of five and nine are going to be overweight and about seven percent between the age of 10 to 15 are going to be overweight and we all know that once you put on weight at a young age say between five and nine ten and fifteen it's very hard to lose it and because obesity is such a silent slow chronic problem you know you're really not going to feel anything for years even decades and you know all of us you know uh, when we see chubby young babies and everybody says so cute so cuddly let's have another photo and so on and so forth and, and that's all very well but when you have a nine month old who weighs 12 kilos or 14 kilos or sometimes 15 kilos seriously that's a problem and that's a problem one's going to have to grapple with so now we've started counseling families you know when we have babies we see that the trend is that they're going on becoming overweight at a very young age seven months nine months we actually start talking to moms to to the family about getting the diet right because it's that important at that early stage samana mein yahi kehte the ki you know obesity is a problem of the developed countries you know the first world countries and now it's transitioned into countries like us you know developing countries or uh, aspirational countries what has been the change is it is it just the lifestyle is it that you know things like processed food has come to us later and we're we're going doubly quick and trying to catch up with you know what was going on in the West. See, if you look at the underprivileged mm -hmm. strata of society, obesity is much more common than in the affluent. And I guess it's got something to do with with not eating right. So what we have is that you know we we eat stuff that we shouldn't be eating. We've gone away from the traditional Indian family concept of the thali, and and you know I like to talk talk about it because I think it's so relevant to 2023. And we've just forgotten the goodness of the thali. So we're eating more carbohydrates. We are eating more sugar. Uh, you know, we are eating more more saturated fat. Our lifestyle is is not disciplined. We don't exercise. Uh, you know, we 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 like to indulge in stuff that entails us sitting. And I'm talking about kids and teenagers who you know be very happy you know playing games on their phone or on their ipad or what have you but won't really go for a jog or you know in the olden days you know you had skipping was so popular that doesn't happen um, you know physical sports not that popular and of course covid has really made things worse if you look at the psychological aspects you look at the physical aspects you know some of the medical issues we're seeing for example i had never seen as much constipation as i have seen in children in in the last two years uh, than, than ever before because the routine was gone they weren't getting up in time there wasn't that rigor of getting ready for school having breakfast and then the you know break in, in in school and coming back at a particular time the physical activity you know that whole discipline thing went not drinking enough water just sitting around so constipation obesity and i have definitely definitely in fact all pediatricians have seen way more increase in in the number of children with uh, overweight issues and obesity in in the last 18 months than we ever did so it's it's multiple factors society's changed the food we eat isn't kind of uh, the way it should be we don't exercise the whole concept of of uh, what is a, a balanced life is kind of gone i mean you know a balanced life today is okay i didn't spend four hours on on social media no it used to be six 
last last month it was 6 so you know you kind of the benchmark itself has totally changed the numbers around children and i'm going to come later to the adults as well those are very very alarming yes. aren't they um a few years ago we looked at 13 schools in south delhi and we went out to the schools and we did an analysis on 50 600 children to look at you know what was the incidence of or, or prevalence of or obesity and overweight and about 6.8% of them were overweight close to 2.7% were obese and this is pre covid of course but then we decided to dig a little bit deeper and we tried to find out hey what were the issues with with uh, you know them being overweight and you know we talked to them we talked to their parents and the parents said no no my child eats such a balanced diet and the routine is great they had no idea what these kids were doing in school in terms of eating from each other and they were having all these crisps and they were having the samosas and the kachoris from outside the school which the parents had absolutely no idea so you know they thought the the kid was only having the fat uh, you know lunch box that they gave and that healthy apple and a banana they had absolutely no idea what was going on the other thing that that uh, we are seeing now a trend in the last few years is this meal at you know at, within the school it's a buffet so if you're a foodie i mean you have suddenly been given access to huge amounts of food which there was no way i mean how many lunch boxes could you take i mean <laughs> have a go at how many kids were going to give you their lunch but with a buffet it's not a problem we looked at that and then we went in and looked at getting ultrasounds done for some of these children so we did ultrasounds in about 900 of these children and you'd be surprised 22 of them 22% had fatty liver and when we looked at the proportion of fatty livers and looked at obesity we found in the kids who were obese or overweight 44% had fatty liver so you would have no idea unless you did an ultrasound that the child had a fatty liver Now, very interestingly, we then went on and did blood tests in these children with fatty livers, and we found that in 22% of the kids who had a fatty liver on an ultrasound, the liver tests were abnormal. Their enzymes AST and ALT were high, which meant that there was an inflammatory process that had already commenced. And this inflammation over a period of time is going to cause damage to the liver. Now, fatty liver disease is a very serious problem globally, and we don't want that to happen in India. So it's extremely important that everybody takes obesity seriously uh, and and parents really keep a very close eye on what their child is eating and what they need to look at is eating not just out of the lunch box but really through the whole day So where is the parents faltering then I don't think the parents are faltering but I think the parents in some situations are being a little casual So <clears throat> traditionally you know we don't even use the word obesity and overweight we say healthy right what is healthy supposed to mean actually healthy when you say somebody is healthy you're trying to say you're overweight we just a very polite way of saying that and and when we see healthy children we see the the kids with the chubby cheeks and and really the big thighs and so on <clears throat> we don't realize that these kids are going to be chubby toddlers they're going to be chubby 5 to 10 year olds and then they're going to be chubby adolescents and we know you put on weight uh, during adolescence and you were meant to that's part of your normal growth and development so <clears throat> you have to be cautious so sometimes what we see is parents look the other way they're a bit casual and in certain families i have to say that there's actual denial I mean, you're going to actually show them the facts and saying, "Hey, listen, your child's 10 kilos overweight at age four," and uh, sometimes the parents say, "No, it's okay. जो बड़ा होएगा तो ठीक हो जाएगा." You know, his height will increase or her height will increase, and it all balances out. But honestly, it doesn't balance out. And then one has to tell them, "Hey, listen, if I were to do an ultrasound, I'm going to find the fatty liver. If I look at the insulin level, it's going to be abnormal. If I do a fasting lipid profile." that in all probability is going to show high cholesterol and if this carries on for 10 to 15 years we're going to have issues with dyslipidemia we're going to have issues with heart disease we're going to have issues with hypertension we're going to have issues with diabetes and once you get any of these then all the organ systems get impacted because sometimes you know uh, you see the black mark that that you see on the neck you know acanthosis which is a manifestation again of hyperinsulinemia and that sometimes bother parents and say hey listen my my child's getting this mark and then you sit with them and explain to them hey this and this is because the child has got put on so much weight and that's how uh, the body is reacting and it's like a telltale sign of the fact that we need to intervene so let's intervene the other problem sometimes one has is that you know okay we've gone past the denial 
so we've accepted that we have a problem the child is obese the child is or overweight now we need to bring in a, a comprehensive program to get the weight reduction and then we expect the child to diet we expect the child to have an exercise routine and we have a sense of discipline sometimes the child's pretty fixated and is is focused and wants to do all that and then we get kachoris at tea time and then we have rasgullas and gulab jamuns for dinner and then every weekend we are going to have jalebis i mean the poor child is expected really to to be on this diet and everybody else is really having all the goodies and i've seen that sometimes the parents just find it very hard to control themselves and we have to realize that it is the responsibility of the parent to lead by example if you are not going to be disciplined there is no chance that that child is going to carry on on that dietary reg- regimen or regime for an extended period of time the child will try and give up and you know can't really blame the child it's a bit like what you had mentioned earlier ki uh, when, when children are small and they're a bit cuddly and you know they're a bit a little overweight we'll say they're so cuddly and cute similarly i think society society norms have also been ki keep feeding the child jitna khaya wo kam hai i think that hasn't changed either right absolutely and you know what parents sometimes are not realizing that these days we are seeing serious body image issues now we used to see them in teenagers now we see them at like 7 and 8 the child who's put on weight will now refuse to get on and and get into a, a you know swimming uh, costume and she will not go into the pool because other kids sort of uh, you know point uh, you know point out to the fact that she is put on weight so then we get body image issues then what happens we get these kids who from being overweight want to become skinny right and then and they stop eating so it is not surprising for us to see children who where the parents say like you know the my child's lost 10 kilos in the last 3 months no child is not eating and sometimes uh, you know you also see bulimia so i mean on one side so from obesity you go to anorexia and bulimia and then all the issues that come up with psychological management it really becomes very hard and and i know of so many instances where one comment one comment has changed the way the child looks at her body and goes from being chubby to becoming skinny and when she becomes skinny she still thinks she's fat because the whole concept of body image is gone and and it all boils down to the fact that the child was perhaps post fed ended up becoming overweight and then somebody made a comment and then this whole cycle started the, the surprising fact is women and yeah. you know their 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 percentage of uh, being overweight and being obese is way higher than that of men it's almost double from what i read in certain societies it's it's very very um, you know dramatic uh, but what we are seeing in india is that it's gone up with both obviously it's gone up more in women uh, than it has in men and again it's it's perhaps uh, related to just what they consume more than anything else because you know traditionally women Uh, do actually do a fair amount of physical labor in the farms and you look out in the villages and you know there there's a lot of pressure uh, in terms of physical manual work but i think it's just the the diet constitution has just gone off and and that has contributed to that and and we have a major festival every 6 days what does a major festival entail it means eating a little bit extra a little bit of mithai or a little bit of this and a little bit of that so it adds up then we also quite often don't realize little changes make a big difference you know the calorie uh, content of a chapati versus a paratha it's a good 40 calories more for a paratha so imagine if you're having two every day and it adds on these little little things add on and this whole mithai thing adds on so i i i think one of the things that we have is that we just not eating right you know traditionally we always ate early in in the indian scheme of things at night and there was always a big gap between dinner and going to bed now over a period of time that's just got stretched and stretched and stretched and you know um, you know men and women come home they really tired and then they you know sometimes order take away or what have you they start eating at 8:39 and and you know sometimes the dinner finishes at 10 at 11 they go to sleep that's just not right the body is not designed for that the other thing we we notice is that dinner sometimes becoming the heaviest meal of the day which is ridiculous the heaviest meal of the day has to be the breakfast because that's how the body is been programmed you get up 
you do your exercise you get ready you eat then you have the whole day to burn what you've taken in you talk to a lot of people you'd be surprised lunch no time uh, or something on the go breakfast okay a cup of coffee or you know just pick up a banana on the way or something like that and dinner is really the big meal which 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 is absolutely wrong according to ayurvedic uh, science a thali was supposed to give you all six states in every single meal it's not just meetha it's not just salt you know it's pungent everything six so what did we have we had some some amount of carbohydrate that was coming in through the cereal either rice depending on where you live in south india more rice north india more chapati you always had a lentil i had a vegetable you had raita or dahi you had you know there is goodness in chutney chutney has a lot of antioxidants and there's some goodness in a char not huge amounts because obviously there's a problem with salt and you don't want too much salt getting into your system but a char has flavonoids you know so it, it has goodness that comes with it and then there was and there was some amount of uh, you know sweet as well so it was very balanced and then you had the salad and the fruit so you you actually got exposed to the right mix of carbohydrates fat protein you got the minerals you got the vitamins you got the trace elements you know your protein content was 10 to 15% uh, and uh, uh, the fat would be somewhere between 15 to 25 to 30 and 50 to 70% would come out of carbohydrates so it was just the right mix we've gone away from it just go back and embrace the thali Definitely, I feel when I look around me, I feel like that ship has really sailed. You know, one would hope that it becomes a trend again. You never know what what might just click. It's going to require some smart, uh, <clears throat> you know, some smart marketing people would come in and come back with a thali and 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 you look at how popular coconut water has become overseas. In marketing, and I wanted to ask you, it, it, it's it's really tough with the the whole advertising uh, business, right? That is also kind of. adding to the whole issue because uh, it's not very easy to take junk food out i mean i know there are a lot of disclaimers that keep coming out or there have been attempt to uh, you know uh, remove them from the time where children are watching television and all of that but it it's it things easier said than done right no it's it's absolutely uh, very difficult to do it and we have to realize that <clears throat> you know it's one thing to say uh, you know uh, control this through pressure and so on but honestly anything that requires behavior modification does not sustain unless it comes from within and how will it come from within if you actually have a candid conversation and explain the logic to that person on why you need to do this you know as dale carnegie would say generate an eager want in that person so you really have to generate that eager want in that person to want to do that and once that happens then your job's done you don't have to go on badgering that person it's always this element of forcing which creates a problem and that is not sustainable it never will sustain out beyond a few weeks beyond a few months we seen that you know with behavior with with anything for example <clears throat> you want your child to excel in sports or something like that maybe you choose the wrong sports child's not interested and suddenly the child wants to you know excel in taekwondo and you can't stop your child from practicing every day it's because the child wants to do it and the same applies to any behavior modification whether it's eating the huge thing that we are seeing now, now is also with sleep deprivation that and we all know how important uh, you know 7 hours of sleep minimum 7 hours of sleep is for everyone and of course for children is very very important the growth hormone gets released at night and they need to rest and they need to recharge their batteries before they start an action packed day at school um, so early in the morning so that is another thing that we are seeing and again you know you can't force anybody to do that okay you you can cut down television time but you have to explain to the child on why it's important and only then will it work so it no, behavior no. modification is very tough yeah it is it is isn't it and also the perception that if someone is lean they are healthy so they are not i mean for example uh, you know we have this lean fatty liver uh, scenario or where you have the lean phenotype with fatty liver so i, I mentioned that when we looked at our our, our group of um, children they, they 
they were thin children also who had fatty liver so it's also about how your body metabolizes uh, fat how how does it metabolize uh, what you're bringing in a lot of lean people have serious uh, issues in terms of vitamin deficiencies and you know if you look at the incidence of vitamin deficiency it's really uh, a, a big problem in india and if you look at some of the other uh deficiencies as well you find them public policy when it comes to issues like this whether it is this or whether it is the rising heart issues in the country are we really prepared to tackle that we are apollo actually we presented this data we did 561000 uh, health checks in in indians in 2022 so that's pretty substantive uh, 560000 across the length and breadth of the country and 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 we found for example i mean because we're talking about obesity we, when we compared pre covid to post covid in 2022 12% of the the group that came in for a health check had an issue with being overweight or being obese and this was 9% so uh, when we looked at hypertension we saw an increase in hypertension uh, we we saw an increase in diabetes we saw increase in fatty levels but we also saw a fair amount of psychological issues in terms of sleep deprivation <coughs> we also saw Uh, more individuals suffering from sleep apnea which again is related to obesity in in significant in a significant proportion of individuals so you know this whole cycle they all go hand in hand so the government has has created a program there are uh, non communicable diseases clinics across every district but what we need is a behavior change you know what we need is we need a campaign where everyone starts thinking about their health and you know and i really want to uh, through the medium of of your uh, show request with fold in hand women please think of your health please and i know gandhi ji had said a man can never be a woman's equal with the spirit of selfless service that nature has endowed her yes but please think about your health you don't have to be the last to eat you don't have to be the last to go and see a doctor you don't have to be the last person to actually ever get a health check up done why you owe it to yourself you owe it you keep the family together why can't you put yourself first you know in an aircraft you say before assisting others please get your oxygen mask on women are not doing that and we are seeing the consequences we are seeing that with breast cancer cervical cancer not getting a pap smear done not looking after your health after menopause we know that the incidence of heart disease in women is equal to that of men the protection goes after menopause and we seeing that but women will not get their preventive health checks done they will not get their uh, you know uh, um, treadmill done they will not get their tests done so really want to urge everyone to start thinking about their health but women more than others look at the stress uh, that that everybody is undergoing you should get a medical done at the age of 30 every year because you're going to pick up stuff it's the point of getting to know at 45 that you have three things that could have been fixed 15 years ago if only you had got your blood pressure checked and got basic tests done and sat with a physician and a dietitian and you know put in corrective measures your life would be so different we need to get people to start thinking about their health and this means get a health check then it means getting a sense of exercise into into your routine at least 5 or 6 days in a week exercise 30 to 45 minutes no excuses okay you want to go to the gym gym is far this happening that happening there's nobody there to stop you from walking walk it's 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 very effective nobody can have an excuse for not walking 40 minutes 6 days in a week sleep 7 hours go off social media for a while eat right don't smoke so we really need to get a hold of our health because if we can't do that we will be a, a very successful nation in terms of our economic growth and so on but we'll be spending a crazy amount of money uh, on managing the health consequences of of uh, that um, uh, affluence that we would have accumulated by compromising on our health and we shouldn't we have to get that balance right it needs to be restored this is really so much food for thought it's something i've been listening to and you know i absolutely agree i think we women just tend to say you know we just do it we'll just do it and let's just sort other things out but this is a you know a very very timely reminder dr sibal for all of us here brilliant as always dr anupam sibal thank you so much for taking the time you. out today for thank this. you thank you thank you so much jyotsa thank you